Yesterday, shortly after the market closed, Tesla released their Q1 2020 delivery results and they had their best Q1 in company history. If you take a look at this chart, you can see just how Q1 2020 compares to the last several quarters. In Q1 of 2017, Tesla delivered approximately 25,000 vehicles, which was a 69% increase over Q1 2016. In quarter one of 2018, they delivered 29,980 vehicles, which was a 20% growth over the previous Q1. And in Q1 of 2019, they delivered 63,000 vehicles, which was 110% growth. And in the recent quarter, at 88,400 vehicles delivered, that is a 40% growth over Q1 2019. If you compare Q1 2017 deliveries to Q1 2020 deliveries, these numbers have increased by 254%. Tesla has such high demand that they were still able to increase their Q1 from the previous year by a substantial amount, even with the current struggles in the market. So in order to get a good perspective on this growth percentage that Tesla was able to post, I wanted to compare this number to the rest of the automotive industry for Q1 of 2020. Between Q1 2019 and Q1 2020, Tesla's deliveries increased 40%. The only other brand that was able to post an increase in deliveries was Kia, and they were plus 1% for deliveries. GM posted a negative 7 difference, Toyota negative 8, Fiat Chrysler negative 10%, Hyundai minus 11%, Volvo minus 12%, Audi minus 14%, BMW minus 15%, Subaru minus 17%, Honda minus 19%, Porsche minus 20%, and Nissan minus 30%. These are pretty substantial numbers, especially when you realize that Tesla is on the opposite flip side of this, where they had a 40% growth. Now with these results, Tesla also revealed their production numbers for Q1. And if you take a look at this chart to see how Tesla's Q1 2020 production numbers compared to the last several quarters, you can see that in Q1 2017, Tesla produced 25,418 vehicles. In Q1 2018, that grew to 34,494 vehicles. In Q1 2019, that grew up to 77,100 vehicles. And in Q1 2020, even with all the shutdowns, the slowdowns, and all that, Tesla was still able to produce 102,672 vehicles. If you compare Tesla's production numbers for Q1 2017 to Q1 2020, they have grown by 304%. So the recent delivery and production numbers for Tesla are very impressive, especially when you put that in the context of what is going on in the world. Now I'd like to talk about the potential profitability for Tesla. So Tesla has posted a profit in Q3 2018, Q4 2018, Q3 2019, and Q4 2019. And as you can see there, there is a trend that they posted profit in Q3 and Q4 of each of the past two years. Within these years, there is also a trend that there were more vehicles delivered than produced in those quarters. So as you can see from this chart, in Q3 2018, Tesla posted a $312 million gap profit and they delivered 3,358 more vehicles than they were able to produce. In Q4 2018, there was a similar trend with a gap profit of $140 million, and they delivered 4,145 more vehicles than they produced. In Q3 of 2019, they delivered 845 more vehicles than they produced and posted a profit of $143 million. And in Q4 2019, Tesla delivered 7,109 more vehicles than they produced and they posted a profit of $105 million. So once again, there are two trends here. Even in a normal year for Tesla, they recently have only posted profit in Q3 and Q4 of the year. On top of that, within these years, the production number needed to be less than the delivery number to help push them over the edge. So if you take a look at Tesla's recent history for Q1 financial results, you'll see in Q1 of 2017, they posted a loss of $330 million. They posted a loss of $710 million in Q1 2018. They posted a loss of $522 million in Q1 of 2019. 
and I believe they will post around a $500 million loss in Q1 of 2020. So you'll see on this chart, opposite to what we found on the last chart, when Tesla had a loss in Q1 here, they had more vehicles produced than delivered. Of course, a lot of the recent quarters where Tesla has posted a loss that had to do with the ramp up of the Model 3 and all the production issues they had and all the money they had to spend to get production up to where it needed to be. That being said, if you look at Q1 of 2019, where they produced 14,100 more vehicles than they delivered, and you compare that to what they produced versus delivered in 2020, you'll see that number is pretty close. So obviously there's no way to really know until Tesla actually releases results, but in my opinion, based on some data, including this production delivery numbers and some of the things like that, I do believe Tesla's losses will not exceed $500 million. I think if Tesla is able to post a loss less than $500 million, this will actually be a great sign for Tesla because even in the previous quarters when there was not a financial crisis, Tesla still posted a loss. So if they were able to do less in Q1 of 2019, I see that as a big win. So Tesla did recently shut down production in the Fremont, California vehicle factory. On top of all that, Tesla has reduced their staff at Gigafactory Nevada by 75% and Panasonic has also completely halted operations and battery productions there at Gigafactory Nevada. But the good news in all this is that the Gigafactory in Shanghai, China is back up to producing vehicles and according to some recent articles is actually in full production once again. On March 17th of 2020, Tesla Roddy put out an article stating that Giga Shanghai was currently back in full operations. Also, according to a recent Inside EVs article, Tesla was able to deliver around 3,958 vehicles in China in February of this year. Also, on March 27th, Electrek put out an article that quoted a YouTuber in China that said, quote, Tesla Shanghai Super Factory currently has a production capacity of 3,000 units per week, which is a significant improvement over the 2,000 units per week before the resumption of work. So even with factory shut down, like we mentioned, Gigafactory Shanghai is able to potentially produce 3,000 vehicles per week. Even if Tesla's Fremont facility has to be shut down for an extended period of time, they still have production capabilities in China. Tesla also has plenty of cash on hand, as we've talked about in previous videos, and they seem well poised to weather this storm. Of course, no one knows what's actually going to happen in the future and what the Q2 2020 results will look like when all is said and done. But I do believe Tesla is in the best position of any other automaker and that they will still grow year over year for 2020 versus 2019. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something as well. If you are not yet subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, if you click the little bell icon, you'll be notified when new videos are published. Also, if you did like the video, please consider clicking the like button. And if you want to support this channel and help me make more content in the future, please check out the link to the Patreon community that I have created in the description below. Thank you so much.